Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Saurav, and this is my YouTube channel, Data Science Novice. So, if you are new to this channel, please do like and subscribe. Your efforts are massively appreciated. So, in this video, we are going to do a project on how to build a model that can remove noise from the data using auto encoder. It will be a stacked auto encoder with denoising capabilities. Although in theory, we saw that we built denoise auto encoder on top of sparse auto encoder, but I just want to show you that how flexible deep learning can be. And if you don't know what is an auto encoder, watch the video in the i button. I have explained everything. So let's open up the Google Colab. So these are the libraries we are going to use, and the data set is Fashion MNIST. And if you have been following this series, you might have an idea about what is Fashion MNIST data set. If you don't know, you can just Google and find whatever you want to find about this data set. And the reason for using these data set is because they are already available in good amount and we do not need to put much efforts. And when we are diving into deep learning, our first focus should be on how to implement these algorithms. So once we have idea about how to implement them, we can use them on our custom data set. So that's why we are using easily available data sets so that we can focus on algorithm and its TensorFlow implementation. So let's import the data set and for that we are going to create four variables x train y train and then x test and y test make sure to follow the correct sequence next we are going to call our fashion mnist object and on that we are going to call load data and we do not need to pass any parameters so let's run this cell and now you can see that the data is downloading and next we are going to visualize the data set and this block of code is going to be very familiar to you if you have been following my video series so first we are going to set the plot size using figure method and inside that we have to pass the parameter figure size that is going to be 5 by 5. Next we are going to run a for loop and in range we are going to pass the number of images we want to plot. As of now we are going to plot 9 images. Next we call subplot functionality and in that we are going to pass number of rows and columns. So we are creating 3 by 3 grid and the last one is just index for the plot which cannot be zero, so that's why i plus one. Next, we set the axis equals to all, so that we can have clean plot. And finally, we are going to use im show method, that is image show method, and inside that we pass the image. So we are going to use indexing. So you can see that it is going to run for loop, and then we have to pass i. So this will allow us to create multiple, sorry, plot multiple images. And once we are out of the loop, we just have to call plt.show method. So here we can see that first five images from the data set and they are of clothes, boots, shoes, sandal, etc, etc. Basically they are from fashion industry. These are grayscale images. But we are seeing this kind of coloring that is because we have to set C map equals to gray. And this is something I have already talked about. If we want to plot more images, we can simply change the values in the range. So let's pass 16 here. And next we have to change the subplot. Here we are going to pass 4 by 4. And that's all we have to do. So now let's run this cell. And now you can see that we have 16 images in 4 by 4 grid. Obviously you can change this grid. You can make it like uh, 2 into 8 or whatever number you want to pass. Make sure it matches with 16. So next thing is we have to scale the data set. Since it consists of image, we are going to divide it by 255. Because the highest pixel value can be 255. So after this, the pixel value will range between 0 and 1. We do this because it makes the training faster and smoother. And I'm talking about in terms of deep learning. Obviously, in machine learning, there are many reasons which I have talked about in advanced linear regression project. And the same thing we are going to do for the test data as well. Next, we are going to learn how to introduce noise in the data set and how it's going to look like. And for that, we are going to use Gaussian noise. So Gaussian noise is statistical noise having a probability distribution, or you can say PDF, equal to that of normal distribution, which is also known as Gaussian distribution. In another word, the value that noise can take are on Gaussian distribution. So first, we have to instantiate the Gaussian noise, and it takes one parameter, that is STD, that stands for standard deviation. And we are going to pass 0 0.2. And you can play around with this value. And next we are going to apply this Gaussian noise on the sample data. So for that we are just going to create a noisy image variable. And then we are going to call this noise. 
and inside that we are going to pass our data set so i'm just going to use four images to show you that how it is going to look like and then we set training equals to true okay so we are getting an error okay this is a silly mistake just typo so next we are going to visualize the original image and the noisy image so i'm going to copy paste the same code from above now let's copy paste this one more time so this one is going to be for actual image and the second one is going to be for noisy image and for that i just have to change this x chain to noisy image next we are going to add print statement so for this i'm going to call it actual image and the next for next one we are going to call it a uh, noisy image okay so we are getting an error so let me see okay so this is because we only have four images in our noisy image so let's make it more images so that we do not have this error again so here we have the comparison between actual image and the noisy image so the next task is to build a auto encoder that can remove this noise and make it look like the original one so let's build the auto encoder so first we are going to define the size of the input so unit equals to 28 by 28 because the pixel size is 28 by 28 and why we are saving it like this because we want to use this model for other images as well so you will see in a second that why i am doing this next we are going to set the seed since gaussian noise is random in nature and we want our result to be reproducible so we can call tf.random.setSeed and inside that we just have to pass any number. It can be any number, you just don't have to worry about it. And that's all we have to do before building the model and now we are ready to build the model. So first we have to build the encoder part of the autoencoder and it is quite simple. Just think of this as we are building neural network. So first the model is going to be sequential in nature. Next we are going to add the flatten layer so that we can flatten the image because we are dealing with neural network. And this part I have briefly talked about in neural network video. So if you don't understand this, just go and watch that video after this video. And in that we are going to pass just one parameter that is input shape, which is going to be 28 by 28. Either you can pass it as a list or you can pass it as a tuple, doesn't matter at all. And next we are going to introduce the noisy layer. So we are going to call encoder.add and inside that we are just going to pass Gaussian noise and it is going to take the same parameter as we saw earlier. So obviously I'm going to pass 0.2. So now it is time to add layers in the stack.auto encoder. So for that I'm going to call encoder.add and inside that we are just going to add dense layer. So dense and then we have to pass the number of units. So units equals to units and divided by 2. And we are using double slash because we want integral values, not the floating point values. So next we have to pass activation layer and obviously it is going to be ReLU. Next we are going to copy paste this code four times so that we do not have to write it again and again. And then we are going to change the number of neurons in each layer. And for that we just have to change the division. Like first in first layer it was two, then in second layer it will be four. And just like that. So when I said reuse, so when I said reusability, I was talking about this. So if you want to work with some other data set, we just have to upload it and just change my units variable because shape may not be the same. And just like that, we are ready to train stacked auto encoder on some other data set as well. So let's add one more layer and this time I'm going to divide it by 64. So now you can visualize the structure like the number of neurons are decreasing with each layer just like we talked in the lecture part. So once we are done with the encoder, our next task is to build the decoder part. So the decoder is also a neural network. So this is going to be a sequential as well. So next we are going to add the layer. So decoder dot add and inside that we just have to pass the dense layer. And then we have to pass the number of units. So this is going to be opposite of encoder. So here we pass unit equals to units divided by 32. And since it's going to take input from the encoder, so we have to pass input shape, which is going to be unit divided by 64, basically the last output from the encoder. Okay, let me format this first. Okay, so next we have to pass the activation function that is going to be ReLU. 
so here it is 64 not 6 let me correct it and next we are going to add another layer so decoder dot add and then we pass the dense layer and inside that we just have to pass the unit so units equals to units divided by 16 because we are going to mirror this encoder so that's why we are decreasing the divisor so activation is going to be ReLU and what I'm going to do now I'm just going to copy paste this line of code and I'm just going to mirror this encoder part and again there is no hard and fast rule that you have to mirror this you can play around with the layers it is not necessary that encoder and decoder should mirror each other let's say encoder can have five layers and decoder can have two or three layers that all depends upon you and now let's add the last layer so decoder dot add and then we pass the dense layer and now here unit is going to be equals to units and the activation function is going to be sigmoid now the last thing we have to do is to add the reshape layer since we flatten the image in the initial stage we have to make it to the original shape so that algorithm can compare the images so we are going to add the reshape layer so decoder dot add then we pass the reshape and inside that we just have to pass 28 by 28 so now we have encoder and decoder part ready our next task is to join them together and this is very simple so i am going to create a new variable inside that i am going to store the model so i am going to call it noise reduction or noise red then we call the sequential model and inside that we are going to pass the encoder and decoder in a list and that's all we have to do and now our encoder is ready to train but before that we have to compile the model just like we do with all the other neural networks so noise red dot compile then we have to pass the loss and the loss is going to be binary cross entropy that is because model is just comparing that whether the image is same or not and then next we have the atom optimizer you can play around with it and the matrix is going to be accuracy and if you have been following this series you won't have any problem understanding these things so if you don't understand this just go ahead and watch my other videos you won't have any problem so we have the model compiled next thing is to fit the model so noise red and then we have to call the fit method and inside that we have to pass the data which is going to be explained and next we have to pass the same data again because this is the output we want and we are going to run this model for 10 epochs so that's all we have to do but before running this cell we are going to change the accelerator to gpu so let's do that so click on add it so here in the notebook setting we have the option of hardware accelerator so i'm going to select it to gpu and then we are going to run all the cell because it has disconnected due to because we have changed the accelerator so it's going to run all the cells so click on runtime and run, click on run all so the training has started so it is going to take some time so what i'm going to do i'm going to fast forward in time and see you once the training is done so the training has finished and now we are ready to clean the noisy image but before that we have to have the noisy image data and we are going to create this data using gaussian noise like the way we did earlier so we are going to create a new variable called test noise and inside that we are going to save all the noisy data so next we have to call the noise and inside that we have to pass the data so x test and we are going to only grab 10 data points and next we have to pass the training parameter and we are going to set it equals to 2 like the way did, we did earlier next we are going to use the noise reduction model to remove the noise from the data so first i'm going to create a variable called clean test image and then we just have to call the auto encoder noise reduction and inside that we just have to pass the noisy data that is test noise and let's run this cell and that's all we have to do now let's visualize all these things so that we can get a better understanding so we are going to visualize the actual image then the noisy image and then the image cleaned by the autoencoder and the code is going to be very similar i have already written this code so i'm going to just copy paste it here and don't worry about the code you can copy paste it from my github account so here is the code and it has three sections the actual image the noisy image and then image cleaned by the autoencoder and you can see that it is just a repetitive code and there is 
nothing new so let's run this cell so here we have actual image and below that we can see the noisy image and now the image cleaned by the auto encoder and you can see that we are able to retain so much information which is quite amazing given that we did not have to do much hard work and the fact that the algorithm is quite simple yet achieved good result so try this notebook with other images as well the good thing is that we have written code in such a way that we just have to change the data set and the number of units and we are ready to go so that's all for this video and if you are new to the channel please do like and subscribe and press the bell icon for the future update so see you in the next video till then bye wear a mask and stay safe